I hope you all have sermon notes. If not, you may get up and get one right now in the back. You also can find it on the app. I like filling in blanks during a sermon. It keeps me focused and also helps me know when the preacher's almost finished. <laughs> yesterday was my half year birthday. Yesterday I turned 65 and a half. Now I know, I know I look 35, but looks can be deceiving. So as we close this Get Over Yourself series, I'm gonna talk about aging with grace, change and wisdom over foolishness. The Bible says we're to be faithful even when facing death, but what are the final years on earth supposed to look like? Everybody tells us to prepare financially for retirement, but there's not much training about how to prepare spiritually for the later years. How can we have maximum influence for Jesus in the final chapters? How can we be wise and not foolish? I want you to please listen today, even if you're young, because we're all on the same journey. And maybe something I say will help you better relate to and better understand older people. Psalm 90 was written by a man who aged well and learned about heading home victoriously. Many people have heard Psalm 90 verse 10, 70 years are given to us, some even live to 80. And many people have heard Psalm 90 verse 12, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. But most of us are not familiar with the rest of this Psalm, which is all about attitude as we age. And most people don't know this Psalm was not written by David, but by Moses long before David. It is the only psalm I know of from Moses. God gave Moses a 40-year assignment when he was 80. So he wrote these wise words between age 80 and age 120. Let's learn some lessons from Moses, okay? Lesson number one, change happens, but the Lord is our home. Fill in the blanks. Change happens, but the Lord is our home home. Psalm 90, 1 and 2. Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from beginning to end, you are God. Moses faced some big changes, but the Lord was his home. Those changes must have caused him to feel insecure. You remember, first he was a pampered prince, then a tough shepherd, and then a much criticized leader of two million ex-slaves. But as he looked back on his up and down life, there was one constant, the Lord. God was there when his mother tucked him into a waterproof basket and put it in the Nile River so he would be found by Pharaoh's daughter. God was there in that Egyptian palace teaching Moses how to lead and relate to royalty. Even when he got angry and killed an Egyptian slave driver, God let him escape to Midian and there God appeared to him in a burning bush. God was with Moses when he went to Pharaoh. God used Moses to perform miracles. God was there helping his people escape by parting the Red Sea. And in the wilderness, when they didn't know where to go, God was there guiding them with a pillar of fire at night and a cloud during the day. Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. Those of us over 60 have seen some big changes. Computer technology has probably forced us into more changes in one generation than any other. And we struggle to keep up with the internet and smartphones. Just about the time I think I'm adequate, something new hits and I have to call my grandkids for help. <laughs> and the moral values in the United States have changed drastically during our lives. Things that were disgraceful when I was a boy are now accepted and promoted. Political correctness has trumped common sense. 
we hardly recognize our country anymore. And it's discouraging. And as we get older, our, our minds are not as sharp. We are more forgetful and we lose confidence. But the toughest change is one we all face as we get older. The people around us die. My mom, dad, and father-in-law have died. Some of my close friends and mentors have died. When people you look to for guidance and stability are gone, you feel lonely. Moses talks about it honestly. Psalm 90, verses 3 to 6. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. For you, a thousand years are as a passing day, as brief as a few night hours. You sweep people away like dreams that disappear. They are like grass that springs up in the morning. In the morning it blooms and flourishes, but by evening it is dry and withered. It makes you feel insecure when people around you die. But there's one constant, God is there. My security is in God. Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. James 1, verse 17, he, God, never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Hebrews 6, 19, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. A day may come when you lose everything and everyone, but if you're a Christian, you always have Jesus. Isaiah 46, verse 4, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. Since my true security is in God, I will be flexible and secure in an ever-changing world. As we get older, we resist change because it makes us feel more insecure. Sometimes we even resist positive change because we see it as an insult to how we've always done things. I know some very smart older folks who won't even try to email or text or FaceTime because it makes them feel ignorant. But they lose some ability to communicate with their grandkids and I believe their quality of life is hurt by inflexibility. Same thing is true in the church. As we get older, we can gripe about all the changes and miss out on great relationships and inspiring worship. Now, I don't like all the changes, but let's admit some of the changes are very good. I think we all like the change from the old King James Bible to the New International Version or the New Living Translation. Many new songs are a big improvement over some hymns. Graves into gardens is much better than blessed be the tie that binds. Jesus Messiah is better than do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. (laughs) Now I like hymns. I, I do. I think it's hard to beat softly and tenderly and it is well with my soul. I want to sing them sometimes. But some of the new music is better than some of the old hymns. We have to keep adapting. We've got to be flexible in methods without changing the message. Because our security is not in the church's music or in the preacher. Our security is in God. Psalm 46, 1 and 2 and 6 and 7. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. Now before I leave this, let me tell you younger people, not all change is good. I have seen many new ideas turn out to be duds. Leisure suits, Amazon Fire phones, new Coke, skinny jeans for men. 
And, and the same is true in the church. In the church, we've seen the rise and fall of bus ministries, dramas, calling programs, apps that didn't live up to the hype. So if we don't get super excited about the latest, greatest new idea, be patient with us. We just may be right. Not all change is good. Not all tradition is bad. So don't abandon traditions too quickly. And you be flexible too. Our security is not in traditions or the latest fad. Our security is in God. Fill in the next blanks. A second lesson from Moses. Sin brings God's anger, but we trust in God's grace. Sin brings God's anger, but we trust in God's grace. Psalm 90, verse 7. We wither beneath your anger. We are overwhelmed by your fury. Now, why would Moses write his security is in God and then say, we wither beneath your anger? Well, the next verse is explain. Psalm 90, 8 and 9. You spread out our sins before you, our secret sins, and you see them all. We live our lives beneath your wrath, ending our years with a groan. Moses looked back and he understood he had done many things wrong. Even his secret sins were exposed to God. Moses got mad, killed an Egyptian slave driver, and buried the body in the sand. But the next day, Moses learned people knew all about his secret sin. And of course, God knew it all along. Moses had an anger problem. He smashed the Ten Commandments at the bottom of Mount Sinai when he was disgusted with God's people. Another time, angry at the people, he hit a rock with his staff when God had told him to gently speak to the rock. And Moses had seen God's wrath against disobedience. When Korah and others challenged Moses' leadership, God opened up the ground and the rebels were swallowed in a giant sinkhole. That's why Moses says in Psalm 90 verse 11, who can comprehend the power of your anger? Your wrath is as awesome as the fear you deserve. The great prophet Isaiah saw the Lord lifted up in the temple. Isaiah's reaction, I'm a sinful person. I'm a man of unclean lips. The older I get, the more I understand my sins are many. Non-Christians like to compare themselves with other people and feel good. But older Christians compare themselves to Jesus, and we are very aware of our sins. I retired a year and a half ago after 21 years as senior pastor at Central Christian Church in Mount Vernon, Illinois. People have said, you must be very proud of what happened during your ministry at Central. Well, I am very thankful. God blessed us so much. During our time at Central, worship attendance went from 400 to over 2,000. There were three building programs, expanded outreach, a new television ministry, 1,500 baptisms. I am so thankful for the way God blessed Central. But the more I look back, the more I see things left undone. And I see I had wrong motives at times. I see times I led from fear, not faith. I see times I was jealous, critical, distant. Maybe people didn't know it, but God did. Psalm 90, 13 and 14. Oh Lord, come back to us. How long will you delay? Take pity on your servants. Satisfy us each morning with your unfailing love so we may sing for joy to the end of our lives. There is hope as we head home because of God's grace. My sins are many, but they are forgiven. The message of the Old Testament is I've broken God's law and I deserve punishment. That's justice. But the message of the New Testament is Jesus has paid the complete penalty for my sin and I am forgiven. That's grace. In Romans chapter 7, Paul looked back and he said, The good I should have done, I didn't always do. The evil I shouldn't have done, I sometimes did. What a miserable person I am. 
Who will free me from this life dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And Paul writes in Romans 8 verse 1, Now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. My sins are many, but they are forgiven. So I will not fear judgment. I will trust God's amazing grace. I won't live the final chapters of my life fearing God's judgment. I will trust God's promises. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Psalm 23, verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Isaiah 1, verse 18. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Christians don't have a death wish, but we do have a death plan. We trust God's promises, and we can say with Paul in Philippians 1-2, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. Next blanks. Life on earth is short, and wisdom is vital. Life on earth is short, and wisdom is vital. Psalm 90, verse 10. Seventy years are given to us. Some even live to 80. But even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. Moses says the average life on earth is 70 or 80 years. And the last decade usually includes pain and trouble. Now Moses was the exception. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7. Moses was 120 years old when he died, it is, yet his eyesight was clear and he was as strong as ever. That's great, but that's not the norm. After age 65 or 70, most of us battle physical problems. When we're young, 65 seems like a long time. But I tell you, when you're standing in my shoes, it's gone by just like that. The Bible says life is a mist that appears and then vanishes away. Psalm 90 verse 12, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. We don't know how many days we have left on earth. We do know our days are limited. Moses is saying, help us make every day count. Help us grow wiser as we grow older in the Christian life. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 13, it is better to be a poor but wise youth than an old and foolish king who refuses all advice. Now, you don't gain wisdom automatically. You can get foolish as you get older. An older woman sat inside a diner watching a well-dressed old man fish in a puddle outside the diner. Feeling sorry for a peer who must be struggling mentally, she invited the old man inside for a sandwich and a cup of coffee. As they sipped their coffee and ate their sandwiches, the woman decided she would humor the old man, so she asked, how many of you caught? The old man answered, you're the fifth one this week. <laughs> My life is short. So I'm going to rejoice and make the most of every day. I don't want to be like a bored kid, always hoping for some great day in the future. I can't wait until Saturday. We're going to Six Flags. But boy, I'm bored right now. And I don't want to be a bitter old geezer craving yesterday. I, I used to be able to hit the driver so much further. I used to be thin and handsome. I used to preach at a big church. Boy, those were the good old days. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow may never come. But we have today, so let's rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 90, verse 15. Give us gladness in proportion to our former misery. Replace the evil years with good. What an odd request. 
Why, why should we be glad when we're hurting and when we're in, in pain? That's, that's when we all complain. But when our bodies get uncomfortable, it reminds us this earthly tent, this body we live in, it's not our permanent home. We will have a new body and an eternal home in heaven. It is inspiring to see older Christians make the most of each day, even in pain, because they know the best is yet to come. Our bodies are dying, but our spirits are being renewed every day. Let me say another word to you younger people, okay? Include some older people in your circle of casual friends. Titus chapter 2 says older Christians in the church should mentor the younger. But they can't mentor you if you're so insecure you never give them the time of day. They can't mentor you if you're so arrogant you think they don't have anything to teach you. Leviticus 19 verse 32. Stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged. Fear your God. You may know a lot more about computers and smartphones than your grandmother, but I guarantee you she knows more about life and people than you do because of her experience. Job 12.12, 12, wisdom belongs to the aged and understanding to the old. You younger folks, the way you treat older people is probably how you'll be treated when you get older because what goes around comes around. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 12, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. Younger people, I challenge you to include some older people in your circle of friends. You may gain some wisdom and you may find out some old folks are more fun than your spoiled, inexperienced friends. <laughs> One more lesson from Moses in Psalm 90, fill in the last blanks. If you're not dead, you're not done. If you're not dead, you're not done. Psalm 90, 16 and 17. Let us, your servants, see you work again. Let our children see your glory. And may the Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Yes, make our efforts successful. Moses is over 80 and he's praying, Lord, show me your approval so I can leave a legacy about your glory to the children following me. When we reach 65, we tend to think our influence is over, it's time to quit, release responsibility to the younger generation, take life easy. Well, there is a time for a change of pace, no doubt. But the Bible is full of examples of people God used in big ways when they were very old. Moses is just one of them. Sarah was 90 when God gave her a baby. Caleb was 85 when he led God's people into battle. Zechariah was very old when God told him he would father John the Baptist. Anna was 84 when she held the baby Jesus in her arms and identified him as the Messiah. John was probably well over 90 when he wrote the book of Revelation. Since I retired from Central... Tammy and I have volunteered in this church in children's ministry, guest services, and I've led Bible studies for adults. We will close an interim ministry at Petersburg Church of Christ on Christmas Day. That church had some tough times. Attendance was about 20. But now, after partnering with First Christian Jacksonville in 2022, the Petersburg Church is back on its feet. Attendance average is 42, and they have a new preacher starting January 1. Why, why, do we think, why do we think we're supposed to quit Christian service at age 65 or 70? Your next chapter could be your best serving Jesus. Revelation 2 verse 10, if you remain faithful even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. If you're not dead, you're not done. Your role still counts. So focus on what matters. Let's not stand before God and say about our last years here on earth, well, my yard never looked better. My golf score went down. Boy, I got great pictures of Europe. Instead, focus on what matters for eternity. Leave a spiritual legacy. Write a letter to your kids and grandkids telling them how they bless you. 
Tell them what's really important to you. Take your grandkids one by one out to lunch and talk about Jesus. If you don't have grandkids, find kids in the church to encourage and mentor. Spend more time praying for your family and praying for the church. Give generously to this church. Volunteer in guest services or children's ministry at 1C. Talk to people about Jesus. Invite people to church. Set an example of how to live the final years on earth. At age 120, Moses climbed Mount Nebo and died. Deuteronomy 34, 5 and 6. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab. But to this day, no one knows the exact place. I think it's really interesting. At this time, when the pharaohs were building ginormous pyramids as monuments to their lives, God buried Moses in an unmarked grave. But don't feel sorry for Moses. He's not on Mount Nebo. He went to be with the Lord, his home, through all generations. May we all look forward to the day when we hear Jesus say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You're safely home. Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us be wise, not foolish. As we age, use us in the best ways possible. Help us be flexible. Help us not fear judgment, but trust your promise. Our sins are washed as white as snow. Help us be joyful and fun to live with. Help us focus on things that matter so we would one day hear you say, well done. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.